Hi, Cindy. <laughs> okay. Well, well, today I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this together. And hang on, I'm hearing myself somewhere. All right, figured it out. <laughs> well, you gotta love it when you're still new at it. But yeah, today I'm gonna be putting this together. This is loom beaded. Um, I did it on a loom. And I've already got everything just about prepared. And a lot of people like to use cardboard on the back of their beading projects. Me, I take a bleach bottle, which is I feel is one of the most sanitary things you could put on the back of your beadwork. Um, and it's just as stiff as the cardboard that that a lot of um, a lot of the other beaders use. And I got a hair barrette that I've already, if you can see that I've outlined to cut it out, and I've already put it on the back of the the barrette, the backing. As you can see, it's full leather. Let me know if I come out of frame. <clears throat> so I've chosen the, the main color and um, black to do as my edging. So the first thing I got to do, first thing I've got to do here is line this up and yeah it can be <laughs> a pain in the neck when you're putting a barrette together because of the arch in the barrette could probably undo it but you've still got an arch in the barrette now i've got a size 12 beading needle because i'm working with size 11 beads and I am going to use my eight pound fire line. And for this, I am going to have to do a wingspan and a half. And a wingspan is from fingertip to fingertip. And then a half is to the middle of your chest. See here, just camera back up there. There we go. I've got glue all over my fingers. <laughs> but, so I'm doing my video, my love. Will you go back there with your mommy, please? I'm watching you. Be Oh, baby. Oh, you look at the candy. Look at the candy. I only take it so far. Then I do grab my bead wax, and I use my bead wax all the way down. Do I? Do you do your loom patterns? Yes, I do. Um, I get graph paper, and let me see if I got some here. I get graph paper, and I get the. I actually download it, and. Then I make copies of it. Got some graph paper right here. And each one of these little squares is actually one centimeter or one millimeter. I believe it's one millimeter. And that is basically the size of my beads. And I color them in with color pens and I figure out my design that way. And this design, I wanted to put eagle feathers in it. As you can see, I've got eagle feathers facing in two directions on both sides. And then I put the broken feather in the middle. Um, the representation of the broken feather is life's not perfect. And we can never be as, as faithful to the skies as an eagle is. So... That's the reason why you see a line going down the middle of the feather. Hi, darling. 
And hi, Amanda. I know I didn't schedule this. I didn't plan on doing it, but I'm sure people have wondered, individuals have wondered how a beaded barrette is put together. There is a lot of work to it, so you're going to see me fight a little bit with it while I'm sewing around the edge, so that way I could put the edging on. But, okay. <laughs> All right, I've, I've done my thread. And let me finish putting the wax on it, so that way my, my thread doesn't get too tangled up while I'm working with it. Or I should tie the knot on the end. This week has been a very busy week for me, and I apologize for not actually getting to coming out and showing you how I did the loom work. Kind of had a emergency with myself. Um, I didn't let a lot of people know, but I had a slight seizure this week. But I'm okay. Well, for this barrette, um, when I do my barrettes, these barrettes run between 40 to $60. And the smaller barrettes that I do in pairs run for 25 to $30 for the pair. And it depends on how I do my barrette too, if I decide to do it on a loom. To me, that's cheaper because my beads are actually already lined up. And when I do it freehand, um, that takes a little more work into it. Because when you do it freehand, you have to sit there and make sure your beads are lined up and perfect. Yes, Cindy, I, I know. Um, I'm also raising my grandchildren, which, you know, I'm not complaining. I adore my grandbabies. And they are, they are my world. <laughs> so if you notice, my voice is a little different. Um, You know, with God's love and God's care, you know, everything's going to be all right. That's that's how I put it. And I know God helps those who help themselves. Because it is written that way. <laughs> and it's also in the teachings. As you can see, I'm... And I'm just I'm just tacking it down around the sides so that way when I do my edging it'll be a lot easier and the barrette will be together. Oh, too far in. So I saw that you tried the the new, um, what is it called, the new thing for videoing live. Is it really easy, Cindy? I'm going to get Cindy to be a moderator. Yeah, StreamYard. I'll make Amanda. I, I want to make everybody I know a moderator. That way, if I see somebody in here I don't know, I'll, I'll actually know I don't know that person. And 
it will be easier to know the new people. I know, my daughter. I know you love me. Now, my oldest daughter, Lily is my youngest daughter, everybody. And my oldest daughter, she does some beautiful loom, loom, loom work. Loom work. And I will probably be having her help me out with some of the beadwork, especially when it comes to looming. And I will let you all know when it's hers. Uh, you'll probably notice it's hers because <laughs> her work is a little different than mine. everybody's weekend going pretty smoothly though hi Jennifer oh bead weaving is wonderful um what type of bead weaving are you interested in? Are you interested in like the small bead weaving or learning how to do the do like the the bigger beads? Um, but I do suggest you start with bigger beads. <laughs> okay, well, the small bead I would suggest for you would probably be um, the size 8 and the smallest to be a size 9 if that's, if that's what you need to do to be able to see. And I always suggest anybody who's learning how to bead to just to learn with the bigger beads because you know you get a you get a good you get a pretty good inkling of what what you're going to do what you're going to be doing you could even start with a size 10 bead if you feel like it i i could probably do some small tutorials um come live with some tutorials and before i do i will work it slow enough but I will let you all know through Messenger, if I have you on Messenger, what to have ready because we will do it together because I feel that is the best way to teach somebody. <laughs> mm. A lot of people learn better by watching and doing it at the same time. As you can see, I've got to work with the guts here, work around it, and make sure it doesn't stick to it. Okay, now before I get any further, I spilled beads earlier today, and I'm going to have to I'm going to have to get the vacuum out, pull out a pair of pantyhose, and this is a really good helpful tip. Um, the hose on your vacuum, you can put a pair of pantyhose on the hose of your vacuum and suck up your beads. It'll save your money. And that's my tip today. Um, a lot of people get discouraged and upset when they spill their beads. And I can relate to it because I didn't know this until um, 
I joined a group on Facebook and one of the gals that does a lot of beating, she, um, <laughs> she was so upset that she had spilled a whole bag like this of beads and she did not want to go down on the floor and pick them all up. So someone that has, hi darling, has been, um, has been beating for quite a while, gave that tip to her. And I was like, you know, I think I'm gonna share that tip also with, you know, those that come to watch me do my beating. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Besides, besides the seizure, I just had a hard time with my arthritis. And... That stuff is just terrible whenever <laughs> whenever it's too hot. I mean, arthritis just is temperamental. I've been told to move to Arizona or New Mexico because, you know, it'll probably help my arthritis. I know Arizona and New Mexico are good places for people who have asthma. but I love living next to the mountains. I live in an area where it's next to the mountains and desert. It's very beautiful. I think a speck of dirt is beautiful, so. <laughs> Okay, Cindy, I will be here. I think we all will. Okay, right now, like I said, I'm just tacking this down around the side so I can do the edging. And for those of you who have not seen the beadwork that's done, I can show you my prized earrings that I'm going to be auctioning off tomorrow or yeah, tomorrow as well. Probably should have put Cindy's jewelry nurse's address down, or YouTube address down in the description, but I wasn't thinking. <laughs> okay, I got to take this in another direction because I'm down here where this big knobby part is. at an angle. Now, if anybody wants to come in with me, you can let me know. I'm still using Google Hangout. <laughs> I gotta find somebody to test out the, the other one. I tried Zoom and for some reason it did something to my computer and I had to roll it back.
Anybody got any questions? Yes, I saw that. And she, she said, I heard her say that it's a lot easier to work with. So you can see that the, the barrette is starting to take form with the, the one underneath it. Is that you, Everett, my little grandson on your mama's, or is that your mama? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm not going to put no moderator status on that one until your mother comes on. He's usually here with me on the weekends, but not this weekend. <laughs> Once I get this on, the edging shouldn't be too much. <coughs> Oops, excuse me. Okay, you can see the, the plastic that I have in there. If I can scoot it over just a little bit, so that way I'm not having to run my needle through it. Okay, you can see the plastic in there, right there. Now what I've got to do is pull this over as I'm sewing. So that way, plastic will straighten up the barrette even more. I put. Oh, he's got his headset on. I just called him young man, my son.
Welcome back, Everett. Or is this Arlena now? Oh, it is Everett. Okay. Didn't pay attention to the name. My goodness, what kind of grandma, huh? See that 14-letter last name up there? I just assume it's my daughter, my other daughter. But anyway, on a good note, I have an actual artist. He's an up-and-coming artist. He has given me permission to actually use his music on my sites. What is his name again, Lily? It's one of her friends. He's been out there for a little bit. If she's even listening. <laughs> you know the last name's Reynolds. Casey Reynolds, is that what it is? Yes, Casey Reynolds. Welcome back, Cindy. I'm almost done with getting this thing around there. As you can see, oops, as you can see that piece of plastic is slowly getting tucked in there nice and neat and it's helping the barrette stay firm i have seen some work out there where where the barrette's not been stabilized properly and the poor barrette falls apart And Darlene, you know those headbands that you do? I like to do those too. I love doing those. I used to do them all the time for my daughters. They'd, they'd be the prettiest little girls going to school with their little beaded headbands. But that's coming from a mom's point of view. <laughs> I do appreciate you all coming to watch me do this. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I want to put this in the auction or just put it up for sale. Because I don't, I don't know how many people really consider hair barrettes jewelry. I do. Most Native Americans do. We consider jewelry 
the hair accessory, yes, but we adorn ourselves with beadwork all over our bodies most of the time, wrists, belts, chest, legs, <laughs> and when we adorn ourselves with beads, we consider it jewelry. <laughs> oh, my little grandson. Now he's my helper, you guys. When he's here, he is grandma's big helper. And I can't believe he is 12 this year. <laughs> he turned 12 in April. And he's learning how to beat, aren't you, Everett? Now, there's something about when men and boys learn how to bead, they can outbead the women. Their designs are so, so beautiful. They're immaculate. And what is the word I'm looking for? You rarely see a mistake in men's beadwork. Use my precision scissor that's poking out too far. He learned um, how to do the Ute's traditional design. Okay, now here comes the good stuff. So this is what it looks like. Sew it around the edges. Now I can clip it shut. Now I'm going to do the edging. So I'm going to do the peacock edging on it because they seem to look prettier on the hair barrettes. So if anybody remembers me doing the peacock tutorial, We pick up four beads to start with. And continue around with just three. Oh, that's true, darling. That is very true. Okay, now I'm going to count one, two, three beads. Because this time, if you notice, I don't have banding around it, so I'm doing this in a traditional style. Hi, Kim. I'm sorry I didn't see you come in, honey. Shout it out there with really big hellos and I'll spot you. <laughs> Sweetheart, go back there with me. Excuse me, I will be right back.
Okay, I'm sorry about that. Four-year-old tried to grab scissors and run off. So I gave her a Cheeto bag. Oh, I love the dazzling. That's the easiest way to bead, I say. <laughs> All that pretty bling. Okay, today, kind of a relaxing day here, Everett. That's what is for Grandma over here. Hi, Triple C. How are you? Welcome to my channel. Everybody's basically watching me put edging on. So we're all watching the grass grow. Oh, I do the same thing, Triple C. I love to bead and just listen to videos. A lot of times everybody's like, where did she go? We haven't seen her. And here I've just been lurking in the videos. Doing my bead work quietly. Before I go any further, I'll show you the beaded earrings I was talking about. These are a representation. They are not um, actual Navajo basket design, but they are representation of the Navajo basket. And their post. These will be going up for auction tomorrow. And I do have the deer hide on the back. <laughs> Our YouTube community is not very big, but it's big enough for all of us. There's a close-up of the bread. It has been loomed. Here 
is the back side. No, grandson, I trust you. Like I always tell you, make good choices. I think a lot of people have been waiting to see me do designs like this. Okay, darling. I think my granddaughter took off with my water cup. She's so cute. Four years old and she thinks she has to have everything that grandma has. I use a I use the eight pound fire line. And then I also use this Nymo. I do the Nymo for the for the looming and my edging is done with the fire line. There's one thing I did learn about Fireline, though. It is not good for fringing. Yes, it does, Everett. It does look like a fishing line. I was just out picking the first few figs of the season. Oh, boy. Well, you, be, you take good care of yourself and be safe, Triple C.
which spool I showed to. Okay, will you spell it for me? Is it good for fringing this one? Okay, I'll, I'll type it out for you. It's just an eyeball thread. <laughs> oh, if I can just get it right. Okay, all right, Darlene. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, this these don't this actually doesn't come by weight. Um, uh, this has let's see if you can see the letter. We go by like size D. <clears throat> I bead with two types of Nymo thread too. This one is the off white. It's an off-white and it's an O. Oh, looks like my granddaughter put, in, put spilled her orange drink on it, but it's O. Or she sat it in it. Yes, it is good for, for fringing. You're making a dream catcher. Okay. Are you making a large, large dream catcher? Or just a small one that you could probably hang off your rearview mirror or something like that? Because if you're going to be fringing a larger one, I would suggest. Oh, my bright, my mind just went blank. Oh my goodness. Um, forget, forget what it's called. Sinew. You can get imitation sinew, and it works just as good for fringing. Because sinew is very flexible. Yeah, I would suggest that you use sinew, the imitation sinew. Do you got a couple of stores that I get my beads from that, well, one of them does actually sell the imitation sinew. Now, if you were beating on a hoop, hoop earring with that, I would I would say, yeah, this uh, Nymo thread would be great for the fringing. But sinew is actually the best for fringing if you're going to be fringing with beads on a on a dream catcher that size.
Yes, Nymo's thread is as close as we've come to um, when we when we when we would use actual sinew because um, when you get the sinew, it it has it's I can't describe it. I'll try to describe it. It the artificial sinew. It you can break it off into into small strands and use it to you know, thread it through your needles and actually you know do what i'm doing right here but with the and you can also use it as a hole when you're threading i usually use it when i'm doing really big projects like regalia or moccasins and i bet that's something y'all would like to see me get up here and do is a pair of moccasins or at least one foot <laughs> oh well as long as he don't just hunt them and not use the meat <laughs> that's the way I think about it I used to be a fish and wildlife officer so <laughs> I'm not very into the game hunters that, you know, are trophy hunters, actually. I find them very disrespectful. All right, grandson. I love you, and you be a good boy. Listen to your mom. Oh, now that's delicious when you do that. <laughs> There's the edging. Coming out pretty nice. going on here started to curl up I'm debating on what color to paint my nails tomorrow. If I should do a metallic or keep doing the light colors and pastels. You have a duck pond in your back at your deer camp. This is about the only one that loves duck hunting. Oh, I love wild boar. Now 
bears, I don't hunt bears, though. The Ute people consider bears to be basically human because when you take off the when you take when they you take off their coat their their fur whatever you want to call it their pelt they have the shape of a human being so we're I, i'm not i'm not much of a bear hunter and I've never eaten bear or tasted bear, but I've heard that it's pretty grisly. Yes, unless you have, well, where I'm from, unless you have an actual permit to do so, then you can. But... We all know how that goes sometimes. All right, I don't understand. No. Figured out. Didn't pull that thread all the way through that one. So hopefully my next video I can show everybody how I do an old traditional loom out of a tree branch and do this, do something like this. Hey Donna, it's good to see ya honey, honey, honey. <laughs> Yeah, I did not schedule no live. I just came right on in today. <laughs> so they're migrating back. Oh, that's really good. So Triple C says oh, I should do metallic. Okay. I can do metallic nails for tomorrow. Oh, nice. Yes, I did, Donna. I did this one on a loom. Okay, and I made my made a boo boo there. Like one too many beads. <laughs> These are done with the eleven O's. As I like to call them, 11 aughts. And of course, the size 12 beading needle. You gotta make sure I made it through my beads. Seems like this is getting trickier as I get older. Threading a needle. Nope, these are tohos. A lot of people have a hard time getting tohos to line up nice in a loom beadwork. But these are tohos. If you know what you're doing, you can do it. You got them? Nice. I was hoping you could get them. Did you check out that, that bead? place that you asked me to give you the address for 
<laughs> they are small while they're bigger than <laughs> Remember, the number chart goes backwards with beads, so you did. Yeah, they have, they had a good amount of beads on their site, but I had to get the Charlottes. And they come all the way from India. That's pretty nice. Okay, where did I put that thing? They look like 15s. Well, they shouldn't have looked no bigger than, than what I pulled up. Let me see. I had a bag here with some. Yeah. See, here's my size 10s. They almost look like a pony bee. But they're size 10s. They're pretty big. Oh, okay. Looks like the granddaughter took scissors to that thing. Oh, you can get a... They don't look like size 10s. Well, send them back and tell them you wanted 10s. That's what I would do. And where did you get those, your tents from? I think they messed up too. I really do think they messed up if they don't look like tens. But if you're if you're looking for some really good beads, sometimes the best place, this is what I was told, the best place to look for some really good beads would be would be on Etsy. They have a lot of stores on Etsy that sell beads. I can look look some up for you, Donna, if you want me to and I'll send you the links. Oh, I could yeah, don't ever order beads through Amazon. I don't. Well, every time I've ordered beads through them, they have really messed up my orders. So I just stick with looking through Etsy, or I go through the lady that I've been getting my beads from lately, and that's um, the Delica Bead Shop Incorporated. And she is a sweet lady. And I met her through Facebook as well. She owns her, her own little shop. Now with this one, I'm going to have to come up between some beads here. So that way I can... What's the name of the bead site I was talking about? Um, I could get a link and probably shoot it in here for you guys. Where did you go? All right, I almost did that wrong. Almost closed this out. <laughs> that would have been crazy.
I usually put her link down in my description, but I didn't do it today. There you go. Her name is Lisa Longcrow. And she's a fabulous lady. Hi, Erin. How are you feeling today, sweetie? I'm sure you're feeling quite pregnant, but. <laughs> oh, there you go. Alive. That's that's the best way to look at it. And today I put I put I went and put together this this loom beaded hair barrette. Oh boy, I lost us. <laughs> and that's what it looks like. Hey, Kelly. Love you too, sis. Hello, Cinnamon. It's good to see you. I don't know if anybody can hear my fan running in the background, but I can. It's about ready to drive me insane. You need one of these in your hair. Do you have really long hair, Erin? <laughs> yes, beading is, is mystifying. I have been able to see things in bead work that I do not see in a lot of places. I think beadwork is just one of the most amazing things that somebody could ever pick up because you make your own designs, you have your own ideas, <laughs> and nobody can ever say you took it from them. <laughs> oh, boy, that's where my hair is, too. Way down there. And mine is salt and pepper all the way down. So doing this bread on a loom, it didn't take as long as it normally does when I bead, when I do my embroidery bead work. It does not take as long. The 
fun part about doing a limb, uh, the limb work is it just always naturally just lines up perfect by itself. But it does take time and patience when you're doing worm beadwork as well. Because you lay your beads up from the bottom and then you lift your beads with your fingers underneath and then you take your then you take your needle as you have your fingers up underneath you take your needle and you go right through the beads making sure that the thread that that they are in between is caught and stabilized I did it again. Ready, ready, come in. Will the doggy get out, baby girl? No, I let him out. Okay. But yeah, this is. See, I forgot to come add on, one of my turquoise beads on there. Ready. With I believe within it, can't you see? Can't see what I'm doing. I'm do that. That thing fall down again. It kind of did. Darn crazy thing. There we go. I'm just threading my needle back again if I can see what I'm doing. All right. Make sure that yeah. you're, you're going on the keyboard. Why? How am I going to that? I can go as long as I want to. Right, guys? <laughs> I told him. Oh. Yeah. You're welcome, Triple C. Yeah, that lady, she's a pretty good lady. And usually when you get your order... You do your orders. She has it most of the time out the same day, unless it's you know like the weekend or the holidays. You know she'll let you know. Thank you, Cinnamon. And Darlene has convinced me to pull this out tomorrow in the auction. I'm going to let everybody know when I pull my beadwork out. Hey, jewelry babe. When I pull my beadwork out in the auction, I am actually starting my auction off pretty, pretty low. And if you've seen some of the beadwork, if you look around... You go looking for beadwork online, you'll see that, you know, some people sell their beadwork like the kind that I do. I mean, like way, way overboard. I think they do. And I try to, I really want to make my beadwork affordable and let somebody walk around with something beautiful as well done by Native American, you know, we don't have to sit there and charge an arm and a leg. The auction will be tomorrow. Jewelry nurse's usual time. <laughs> I'm not getting much communication this week, so... I think some of that has to do with me because I've not been feeling well.
Does Erin happen to know what time Cindy's having her auction tomorrow? Oh, I'm I'm doing it with her. But. Yeah, she usually does essential. She really does. Um, usually it's by about 4.30, I believe, 4, 4.30, 5 o'clock central. If you're, if you're subscribed to her, you should, you should get the notification. The reason why I say should is because the notifications have not been working out for me well this week. I think it's doing it to a lot of people. Is it Easter? Between 5.30 and 6.30? Okay. Thank you, Erin. Mm. Look, I've just got one more side to do. This is awesome. Okay, I've got somebody texting me over here. My husband. <laughs> I should know his name by now, right? <laughs> oh my goodness, he's going to watch this video <laughs> What the heck? <laughs> you didn't recognize me. <laughs> okay, I'm in Nevada, and I live on the state line of Utah and Nevada. So my time zone is actually Mountain Standard Time. <laughs> I can't believe I did that to him. Wow. <laughs> He's going <laughs> to... Oh, he'll be one. He'll probably come home and watch the video. <laughs> he's such <laughs> he's such a good man, though. I am married to a wonderful man. <laughs> I can tell you one thing: being a native, he's not going to let me live it down. Oh, yeah, they do when you wear them a lot. They do fall apart. Yeah, I was thinking maybe it would be about 4.30, 5 o'clock, 5.30, in between or 5 o'clock central time, because I believe that's what she uh, did, what we did last time. Okay. And I am so excited for Cindy because she's going to be going to see her family. I mean, I know what it's like to be far away from family and, and you know, I miss my sister. She's really not too far away, but it feels like it when we haven't seen each other for a while. My sister is only about a 45 minute drive from me. Almost too far. It's crazy when you have to eyeball this. Okay, now that's not my husband. <laughs> That, yes, she is. She's a good person. 
So I hope everybody's planning on being being at the benefit auction that she's having on the fourth because we have another friend that is in need and she really she really needs us to reach out. That's all I can say, you know. I was in a relationship once that left me terrified as well, so she needs some some help. Oh yeah, she does have some really, really good knowledge of of some of you know jewelry history. But I can share something with you because I felt it to be one of the most cutest things that, that she's ever done. Um, she had gone on MSP and. Um, I, I did not, I was not on MSP auction. Yeah. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting here in, in my bedroom watching a movie with my husband. And I kept getting this ding, 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 ding on my phone. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, honey. I thought I turned it down. And I looked at it and here it was our beautiful friend, Adam. <laughs> He's like, Gianna, <laughs> I hope you're getting this message. Cindy needs you. <laughs> and she was auctioning off some. <laughs> she was auctioning off some, um, some Native American jewelry, and she didn't know what the designs were. <laughs> Oh, I got on there as fast as I could because I didn't want to leave a friend hanging, you know. <laughs> okay. Yes, Jewelry Babe, you can donate things to the auction. Um, you could, yeah. If, if you want, you can send whatever you want to me, to Cindy, to um, to Sandy, uh, and I'm not sure if our little friend Vicky's going to be up for it, but yeah, you're more than welcome to send what you need, and it'll be a great thing if we can get quite a bit going for her. Last, our last benefit auction lasted about seven and or seven and a half, six and a half hours, pretty close to seven hours. And that's where everybody got to see my beadwork for the first time. Okay. Yes, uh, Cindy and I, and I'm not sure if Sandy does because I haven't, I haven't got to look at Sandy's uh, descriptions for a while. But usually Cindy does, and I do. We put our our friend mail addresses down in our descriptions, so that way, if you need to need to get a hold of us, send anything, it's right there. Yeah, can you believe that those those checkered rubies? They are a one of a kind made ruby, and whoever got those, I think Robin might have got them, but those are one of a kind rubies. And the the person that made those, she she's not planning on making another set ever again. And she said she's leaving her legacy. <laughs>
Okay. All right, and I'll pick one up from over here. I did start doing some hoops, you know, because the lady saw me the other night and I had some really beautiful beaded hoops that my sister had done. But like I told told you all, I do my hoops differently. And well, the turtle fell out of this one. I got to repair it for my daughter. But these are the kind of hoops I do. And my sister, that's a ladder stitch that I did there. My sister does a brick stitch on her hoops. And so we do a little stitch different than the other. And I also peyote stitch hoops. And that can take a long time to do. It's like a long trip across the world, or at least across the United States. It takes a few days to get there. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm just about done here, and I, I'm going to pull out the, the basket, or the, the basket, the earrings I did that have, they are a representation of the Navajo, the Navajo basket. This is something I did not get to show the other day because I was still working on him. Oh, that's fine. There. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it would have drove you nuts what happened to me today. I, I spilled a bunch of beads already on the carpet. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I use my little trick that I learned. Used to be I'd just pick them up and throw them away because I'd end up with, I'd have to pick them up, use my fingernails, scrape them around and everything, and then I'd be picking up all kinds of cat hair or once in a while a dog hair or something, so I'd throw them away because I didn't think anybody would want animal hair in the beads. So since I've got this new technique that was shared on Facebook in one of the beading One of the beating chats that I go to in there. Um, I just put a pair of pantyhose on my on my hose on my vacuum, and it picks up those beads. It doesn't even really pick up the hair because I have it on such a slow suction that you know it's 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 pretty nice. Okay, now here's where I only pick up two beads because my my starter bead there is right there, and I come down in that one. I always poke my finger when I do that.
I'm getting ready to put my first knot in there. There we go. Almost didn't want to go the way I wanted it to go. Well, Aaron, there's something for you. You know, I just gave you a good tip there. If you ever decide to pick it back up, you know, Saves money, everybody knows. Sometimes beads can get expensive depending on the type of beads you buy. Not, not all of them are really expensive. Oops. This way. I think I have a hungry son in the kitchen. <laughs> He's big enough, he can cook for himself. <laughs> But I still love cooking for my boys. They are my biggest eater and my biggest fan when I'm in the kitchen. Come on. There we go. This thing's in the way, but figured out how to get around it. Okay, one more knot. Just to make sure it stays in there. Oh, that's really nice. Do you have any pictures that you can? Are you on Facebook? I'd like to see some of your murals. I'm I've always loved to look at murals. Matter of fact, I think I fell in love with murals because um, I was young. We lived in, we moved to a town called Belfast, Ohio, and the house that my parents rented, um, there must have been an artist or something that lived there, and the the um, the artwork that was left on the on the wall in the in the dining room area really really attracted me um, it was a wild mustangs running through a river Ready. that is my last knot Did you guys? Oh, 
I am finishing up this barrette, my love. What are you doing? Okay, go put it back in my room. I love you too. I make it be huge, Mark. Okay. And a finished hair bread it is. Looks like I got a bean that decided to stick on there. There we go. And like I said, I'll pull it up for some of you that didn't get to see them earlier. Thank you, Erin. And I know your mother-in-law is going to love these. This is one of her favorite colors. And this is just a representation of the Navajo basket. And these are done with the thumbnail clips as well. On doe hide or deer hide. So with that, I'd like to say thank you for coming to watch me do my beadwork. I always enjoy <laughs> having company while I do my beadwork and talking. Many years ago, the women used to gather, and the Native women, and they would sit together. They would clean hides or or do the do their their artwork together. They'd sit and they would just communicate. Is it Erin, your mom's favorite color? Um, I know it's my oldest daughter's favorite color as well. And. They used to sit together and just talk among each other and have a really good time, almost like um, the quilter, quilters do. Yeah, you're welcome. It's been my pleasure. Um, and thank you, you know, for, for coming to watch me put the barrette together. So I'll see you guys all tomorrow. And triple C, I will have metallic nails tomorrow. I'm not sure if I want to do the blue or the red or pink, whatever color it is, because I think that's all I have. <laughs> I can't find my other two bottles. I think, I think I might have lost them in the move when we moved to this place. So I will see you guys tomorrow, and you guys have a great Saturday. I love you guys.